Thank you for tuning in to WTF Sky. This is part five of complexity. Nature gives us a lot of examples of complex behavior emerging from interaction of many individuals. The members of an ant colony are capable of a wide variety of complex behaviors. Finding and transporting food, constructing elaborate underground complexes of tunnels and chambers, defending their territories from invaders. Such activity would seem to involve a great deal of planning, memory, and coordination. But there's no head ant who draws a blueprint for the colony and gives directions to the worker ants. Cutting that tunnel to the left. Bring that piece of sand over here. Instead, each ant follows a very simple set of rules based on cues from its environment and from the activity of ants nearby. For example, how do ants know to walk in a single file to pick up food and then return in single file to the nest? They don't. They know three simple rules. First, if you come upon something that smells like food, pick it up. Second, when you pick up a piece of food, release a chemical signal, a pheromone. Third, if you come across a pheromone trail left by another ant, follow it. Let's see what happens when a group of ants follows these three simple rules. The first ant wanders about in its environment and picks up a piece of food. She releases a chemical signal and begins to leave a trail. As the ant continues to wander, other ants stumble upon her trail. They follow this trail and are led to the food. Some of them may follow the trail the wrong way, but that's okay. Once the first ant reaches the nest, she will drop off the morsel of food. And when she exits the nest again, she will come upon her own pheromone trail and follow it. The ant does not remember where the food is. She does not know she's following her own trail. She's just following rule number three. Always follow the trail. Meanwhile, more and more ants come upon the original trail and followed it to the food. As they follow the first ant's path back, they strengthen and refine the chemical trail. Soon the ants will appear to march in single file to the food and back. There is no plan. No memory of where the food is. No need for a leader to point the way. Three simple rules and a few environmental clues are all that is needed to orchestrate this remarkably efficient process. From Dog Stars, yeah, we're doing this one again, to Dog and Paw Stars. How you like that? We are now embarking on the age, get it? Embarking. <laughs> I know, I know. We are now embarking on the age of robots. The enormous complexity of living things has been brought sharply into focus by our efforts to create machines that mimic organic living creatures. We now have robots that help in many fields. Bomb disposal, fire and rescue operations, hospital care, military drones, and tanks. Our desire to build robots seems boundless. Indeed, robot building competitions are held annually at many high schools and colleges across the country. We now have robots that can fly planes. Can you guess which plane is being piloted by a robot? On the other hand, the robots that explore other planets can certainly perform feats no human could attempt. From laser eye surgery to automobile construction, we have been quite successful in building robots that can perform remarkably well in situations that can be defined by simple rules and repetitious tasks. 
Similar to the way ants can perform tasks following simple rules, pool robots can clean by moving around in random patterns that eventually cover the entire pool bottom. The tail sweeps back and forth to raise the bottom debris, while water vacuum sucks the dirt into a container bag or net, and occasionally it backs up to avoid getting caught in corners. Vacuum cleaner robots perform their duties with very similar algorithms. The efforts to equip robots with cameras for eyes and other parts that mimic living creatures have met with considerably less success. Only very recently has there been real progress in creating androids, robots shaped like humans that can exhibit a wide range of muscular and motor functionality. But we're still at the starting line when it comes to creating machines that can mimic human thought. It's easy to imagine an ant or a robot as a mindless agent following simple rules that produce the illusion of complexity. But what of the human mind? Surely everything that humans do from designing skyscrapers to composing symphonies is not the product of a few simple behaviors. And yet it might be, because everything that humans do, think, or feel is the result of these basic units of brain structure, the neurons. The human brain contains more than a hundred billion neurons. Just like a single ant could never build an anthill, a single neuron can't think, feel, or remember. A neuron's power is the result of its connections to other neurons. Each neuron is connected to as many as a thousand of its neighbors. These trillions of connections provide the playing field upon which the complex activity of the brain takes place. Each neuron can turn its neighbors on or off depending on the signal it sends, and the resulting stable patterns of the neuron firing represent memories and images and thoughts. We don't yet understand the relationship between neural activity and mental experience. We don't know what the precise pattern of a memory or an image or a thought looks like. We don't yet know how to read the cerebral code of neurons. But by looking at the behavior of other complex systems, from anthills to computer simulations, we may yet learn some techniques that allow us to work our way up from the activity of a few neurons to see the structure that emerges from the whole. Thank you for tuning in to WTF Sky. Stay tuned for part six of Complexity. Please like and share this if you like this geeky science stuff. Have a good day, guys. Bye.